So today I'm going to be talking about a difficulty racing attack. Um, the goal is we're an attacker. I'll just go ahead to um, first slide. So, so we're an attacker. Our goal is to make a chain that is the longest chain. Um, and we don't have enough hash rate. Like we don't have 51% of the hash rates. We're at a hash rate disadvantage. But my claim is that we can still make the longest chain uh, with probability one. Uh, so we have a guaranteed shot at making the chain with the most work. Uh, so I'm going to set up a scenario. We're going to make a completely new blockchain um, where miners are allowed to pick their own difficulty. Uh, we're going to do that to give our attacker a break um, and make the math a little bit easier. Um, so the attacker is going to have one tenth of the hash rate of the Honest Network. So if the Honest Network is doing one block every 10 minutes, then at an equivalent difficulty, the attacker can do one block every 100 minutes. Um, and the attacker is going to be mining on a secret chain. The attacker's goal is to get that secret chain to be the uh, longest slash like most difficult chain, um, even though the attacker only has one tenth the hash rate. Um, and like I said, we, we can guarantee we can do this. Um, so the attacker can win. Um, so, after 100 minutes, the honest chain will be, uh, in expectation, will be 10 blocks, maybe 9, maybe 11, whatever. Um, so what we're going to do as the attacker is instead of trying to mine 10 blocks and keep up with the honest chain, we're going to mine one block. We can pick our own difficulty. So we're going to pick a uh, block with a difficulty that is worth 10 blocks. We're going to pick a 10x difficulty. Um, so. There's approximately a nine percent chance that by the time the uh, by the time a hundred minutes have passed, we're gonna have a nine percent chance of finding a block that's worth ten blocks. And so, if we do it soon enough, if we do it before the honest chain gets to ten blocks, uh, we we win. We have the longest chain. Um, so, where I get that nine percent from? I plugged it in over here. Um, this is actually for the next slide. But so we'll we'll go on to the next slide. So let's assume the attacker fails. 9% is not very high. So the attacker is going to do it again. This time, instead of looking for a block worth 10 blocks, the attacker is going to look for a block worth 100 blocks. Um, and so in the time that the honest network takes to make 100 blocks, uh, which is going to be, they're already at 10, so they need 90 blocks. It's going to take them about 900 minutes. The attacker uh, is going to have approximately 8.2% chance of finding a block. Uh, worth 100 blocks in that 900 minutes. And so that's where this equation comes in. Um, it's a Poisson process for finding blocks. Um, I pulled the equation off of Wikipedia and plugged it in, and we got with uh, 0.9, or 0 0.09 expected blocks, we have an 8.2% chance that we find the block we're looking for. Um, so again, 8.2%, not that high. It's a little bit less than last time. Uh, so we're going to try again. Oh, here's our equation. Um, we're going to try again. This time, instead of doing a uh, hundred blocks, we're going to do a thousand blocks. And if you run the math, the chance that we find a block worth a thousand blocks before the honest chain can get from one hundred blocks to one thousand blocks is, once again, it's 8.2%. 8 so we've hit an equilibrium where basically every time the attacker fails, the attacker just runs the same process and tries again. And they have the same chance. And so basically, the attackers, you know, rolling a multi-sided die has, has an 8.2% chance of winning. And they can roll it as many times as they want. Eventually, the attacker is going to win. The attacker is going to have the longest chain. And the honest chain is going to be wiped out. Um, so we have, like, it's a pretty simple strategy. But we've, we've come forward and presented the way that our attacker can win. Um, yeah, so, so there we go. The, the attacker has like a guaranteed chance to win. And the catch is that uh, it's going to take a long time uh, to pull off this attack. So the first 9% the first chance took us uh, 100 minutes. The second 8.2 took 1,000 minutes. The, the next one took 10,000 minutes. Um, and so in expectation, or, or sorry, if if the attacker tries for 30 million years to pull this off, um, then there's a 65% chance that the attacker will succeed within 30 million years. And of course, to get to 80% or whatever, the, the number just blows up really, really badly. Um, but so while it's, while it's 
That's because the attacker is only at 10%. In this contrived example, if the attacker has, say, 30% of the hash rate, instead of 30 million years, it's a couple of months to get to uh, greater than 60% chance of success. So this is a, well, when I read about it, it blew my mind a little bit that, that an attacker with inferior hash rate over a long time scale can definitely uh, create the longest chain. Um, and this essentially comes down to a probability hack, which is that the attacker is just trying to get lucky. If the attacker only has to get lucky once, he's putting like all of his eggs in one basket, right? He only has to mine one really lucky block. As long as he gets that one lucky block, um, he can win. And so he can, and so he can keep his luck proportional to his hash rate by essentially increasing the variance or increasing the difficulty of finding a block. And so that's how he has to compete. So if we want to fight this attack, we need to make sure that that uh, variance is intercepted somehow, and, and actually corresponds to a previous slide. Uh, but that, that's sort of the intuition, is that we're, we're messing around with probability. As it happens, this attack does apply to Bitcoin. Uh, you can do this attack to Bitcoin. However, instead of being able to choose your difficulty, well, you can, you can choose your difficulty, but you can't just choose like an arbitrary difficulty per block. If you want to get to a really high difficulty, you have to do this difficulty raising process. So you mine 2016 blocks, that's going to take forever. Then you, you, know, you give them really tiny timestamps on your secret chain. So when the difficulty adjusts on your secret chain, it's, um, it's going to 4x. Bitcoin has a cap. You can't uh, increase the difficulty by more than 4x per iteration. So basically, the attacker, instead of trying to get lucky in one block, is trying to get lucky in 2016 blocks. So instead of having this like 8.2% chance, it's 0. 0.0000 whatever, a lot of zeros percent chance. But the thing is, the attacker can maintain that chance every time they try again. And it takes them exponentially more time every time they try again. Uh, but in the world of infinity, exponents mean nothing. And so the attacker is guaranteed after you know, tens of the tens of trillions of years, or however, however big the number gets, it gets big, the attacker is guaranteed to win. Um, so this is an attack on Bitcoin that does work, um, is awesome, it's also not practical. Um, let's see. Yeah, so the general requirement for this attack to be applicable to a blockchain in the theoretical sense. I definitely wouldn't say that this attack applies to Bitcoin in a practical sense. In a theoretical sense, it does apply to Bitcoin. And the reason it applies is because we can increase the difficulty of the Bitcoin blockchain as fast as the Honest Network is able to mine blocks at all. Um, and so one of the requirements of this attack is that the attacker has a constant percentage hash rate, right? So over time, the, big, the, the Bitcoin hash rate has been growing. If that's true and you're trying to apply this attack in the, in the theory world, and if, if the hash rate is growing, you have to grow your hash rate in proportion um, to preserve your guaranteed win. Um, and so I don't know of any difficulty adjustment algorithm that tries to fight this and tries to say, you know, if you have less than X hash rate, you won't be able to keep up with the honest chain and, and moving the difficulty, but it's also not really required because it's not, it's not a practical attack. Uh, on Bitcoin, it's not a practical attack. We did see, okay, there, this is a rumor, I don't have a link. Um, but I remember way back when, the, when this paper came out, um, people talked about a couple of altcoins way back when, you know, Quark coin was in the top 10 or whatever. Um, and the, the Quark coin, prime coin days, I believe that this attack was successfully executed against one of the crappy Bitcoin clones. Um, and the reason that it worked on that chain was because they changed the difficulty adjustment algorithm. Um, I think they changed it just, just very like naively to adjust every block. They didn't change the 4x requirement. And so instead of needing 2016 blocks to quadruple the difficulty, you needed one block to quadruple the difficulty. So the difficulty raising attack was actually um, super practical. And as long as you had like 35 or whatever percent of the hash rate, you could, in a few weeks, go ahead and just wipe out the whole chain at lower hash rate than that whole chain. Uh, much more common, though, is, was people just turning on like a single ASIC and pointing it at a chain and, and nuking it. <laughs> uh, 
Um, cool. So I think I, I talked ahead of the slides, and I apologize for that. Uh, but this is that's out of time, and I hope I hope you liked this. Are there any questions? So it seems like this attack gets significantly easier the more uh, mining rate you have. Yep. Um, I don't know what that slope looks like, but is there some point less than 50% where it's like reasonably practical in Bitcoin? Like someone with like 48% or 49.999? I strongly suspect not. Because uh, in Bitcoin, your exponent on the, uh, the number of blocks you have to mine in a row and get lucky on in a row is 2016. And so if you're taking even 48% to the 2016 power, that number collapses down very fast. Um, yeah, when, however, however close you get to 51%, I guess it wouldn't be 48 because the secret chain is going to have 96% uh, of the public chain. So it'd be 96 to the 2016, something like that. Um, and, and even that's gonna collapse it down to an impractically small number. But some of those chains out there that have uh, smaller difficulty adjustment windows might might have practical attacks at like 40 or 50 percent hash rate. What what's the difficulty adjustment window of Bitcoin Cash? <laughs> I, I remember it was pretty know. short, so I know but they I don't. adjusted every block. I don't yeah. know how far backwards they look. Um, and so it would depend on how how many blocks they look over, and also it depends on how much they clamp, how fast the difficulty can move. But from what I remember, um, they don't clamp it too much. The other thing that you could do with Bitcoin Cash is they had their uh, emergency difficulty adjustment like thing where the, the difficulty would just start dropping rapidly, which allowed, uh, allowed miners to mine more than one block every 10 minutes. I think I think Bitcoin Cash is averaging like a solid like 60 second block for a couple, I think, months. Um, so they just mined like 200,000 extra Bitcoins. If you want to do this to Bitcoin Cash, what you do is you go back to that phase and just mine mine all the milk all the blocks you could. Mm. <laughs> and then do the wipeout attack. And then, and then you'd have like all 21 million blocks. Or, or all 21 million Bcash, I don't know. Ugh. <laughs> I have a question. All right. So I know the side of difficulty adjusts every block, right? Yes. But we're not vulnerable to this attack because we don't allow it to 4x per block. Right. So the side of, I forget the exact constant. I think it's allowed to, I think we're targeting it can shift up to like 10x per week or 10x per two weeks. So it's fast, it can move faster than Bitcoin can, but not that much faster. Um, I explicitly had this attack in mind when we were doing the, when we chose the side difficulty algorithm. Um, so I know, I know that it's not practical on Saya. The look, the looking window for Saya is, I want to say it's a half-life of three days, which means you still have to mine like 100 or 200 blocks um, to get lucky. And so for any, any hash rate that's not vanishing, vanishingly close to 50%, um, it's not going to help you in a practical, in a practical scenario. Yeah, I was going to say, it seems like the moment that we have the sliding window is smaller. We, I mean, we still have a probability of this occurring, but it's yep. significantly less likely. Right, and yeah, that's, that's and basically what happens. You're still only going back a certain amount of time now. Yep. Right. Cool, so we're gonna wrap this up and we can just we can go like this. Yeah. Oh, okay, um, one more question. Um, this is kind of stupid, but if this obviously won't work if you're using pooling, right? Because you can't have a secret uh, network if you're pooling with other people unless it's like a dishonest pool. So, how possible right. is a dishonest pool? Um, well, the dis so the dishonest pool, if the pool wanted to be dishonest, they would have to mine on a secret chain without the pool participants noticing, which means the pool has to keep paying its participants 
Um, and also the participants have to have some obliviousness, I would say a high degree of obliviousness, to realize that none of the headers they're mining ever made it onto the public chain. I don't, if you're a pool where most of your miners are small miners and not ever gonna find a block anyway, maybe you could get away with it, because uh, no, one, no one ever finds a winning block and they just assume that the blocks on the network are someone else's winning blocks uh, from the same pool. So I, maybe you could do it as a pool. If, uh, if you have a bunch of small users who don't check the chain and verify they being an honest pool, uh, maybe, maybe you could use other people's hash rate and go ahead and do this. Okay, yeah, I have another question. I just want to like keep trying to push my intuition on this. Okay. Like I can go and see, you know, the Poisson distribution and I get that if you can find a fixed percentage and try it over and over again, then that makes sense that, that you can do this attack. What, what is the intuition for like the amount of work that you that you did, right, effectively is uh, I mean people are gonna are gonna be able to out hash you, right, in terms of sharing yep. number of hashes that you perform. Right. So you're tricking the network into making it look like you did more hashes. Yeah. Is that because of you you fake the timestamp? Like, is that where that comes? Like, that's the part so that I So faking the timestamp doesn't have to do with the tricking the difficulty measuring, right? The difficulty measuring looks at solved blocks. Right. So you fake faking the timestamp is important to trick the difficulty adjustment algorithm and drive the difficulty up. So anytime you mine a block, um, I think intuitively this should make a fair amount of sense. If you mine, you know, if you mine a tenth of a block's worth of work, there's a chance that you'll find a block in that window. It's a small chance, uh, but if you're a miner and you mine for three days, you may get lucky and you may find a block in that three days. So that's essentially what we're doing is we're saying. I know, I know that I don't have enough hash rate to mine a full block, but I'll go ahead and try to mine a third of a block and get lucky um, and find a full block in that, in that one-third, or in this case, in that one-tenth. I'm going to mine one-tenth of a block and try and get lucky. And then the trick is that we just have a mechanism to reset um, and try again to mine a tenth of a block and get lucky again. And, and the trick involves using exponentially more time than the last time. Basically, you, you turn your previous mistake into a rounding error by making your next attempt you know, exponentially bigger, um, and then you go ahead and you try again, um, and you just repeat. It's also worth pointing out, there's an optimization to this attack. I didn't use the, there's a continuous version of the like simplified attack, which I didn't use just to uh, keep the math simple. But what you'd really want to do is always be mining a block that's as difficult as you need to overcome the Honest Network. So if, if the Honest Network is only, say, four blocks long, you don't need to mine a block that has a strength of 10. You only need to mine a block that has a strength of 5, which means you're a lot more likely to get that block and get the chain you're looking for. Um, so in the simple version, what you really do is you just be continuously updating the, the block you're mining to be you know, slightly ahead of the Honest Chain. Um, and I don't... I didn't want to do the math, so I don't know how much of an advantage that is, but I, I think it would probably be, you know, like 50% advantage, instead of 8%, maybe get to 12% per reset. So maybe 30 million years turns into 300,000 years. Um, not that that helps you a whole lot. <laughs> and then in Bitcoin, that doesn't apply. We're already doing the continuous thing. We're basically pushing the difficulty up as much as we possibly can. Uh, but it's it's fighting back. Uh, it takes us a long time to push to push the difficulty up in Bitcoin. Uh, okay. So my, let me let me tell it back to you. My okay. my updated intuition is that um, the reason that this works is because you found a way to continuously take gambles that are bigger and bigger in outcome and stay ahead of the chain. Yep. So so no matter how far the chain gets, I can always take a gamble that might put me ahead. Yeah. And I can keep making those harder and harder and harder gambles and that limit turns out to be like a probability of one. Right. Okay. And uh, and yeah, the first time you take the chance, the total like dollar cost of your gamble is going to be one tenth of the hash rate times hundred minutes. So you know we'll call that we'll call that a hundred dollars. 
The second time you try it is going to be one tenth of the hash rate times a thousand minutes. So now you're, or it's times nine hundred minutes. So now you're on nine hundred dollars. And the third time you're on nine thousand dollars, and then you know ninety thousand dollars. And so your gambles, you know, these these gambles get more and more expensive, but the payoff gets equivalently larger and larger. And so now you go from being able to wipe out, you know, a thousand dollars of chain to being able to wipe out ten thousand dollars of chain, and so on. Um, there's a well known paradox actually that's just like this. It's called the St. Petersburg paradox. And uh, it's a very similar sort of thing where you've had increasing values on successive coin flips and you double the expected uh, return each time. So if across the, the infinite series of coin flips, the expected outcome is actually infinite money. <laughs> And there's the Nightingale betting strategy in blackjack as well, Martin where you, or Martingale, yeah, um, where you just double your bet every time you lose. Oh uh, yeah. Um, and if you have unlimited money, then you'll eventually never lose. And for the gamblers in the building, this only works if the <laughs> casino is not taking a fee. Um, and with the St. Petersburg's St. Petersburg paradox, if the casino is taking a two percent fee, you get infinite wins, but you get infinite more, a bigger infinite number of fees. Um, that's unfortunate for you. <laughs> so don't, don't do that if the casino is taking even, even 1%. <laughs>